Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick and Silicon video, we're going to be tackling three pieces of news which are doing the rounds on the internet right now. Two of which are certainly rumours, but one of which is confirmation from AMD that they are going to be producing the upcoming Zen 2, as well as the Navi GPU architecture on 7nm, and also handling tape outs this year, which is quite interesting. We'll go into that in just a moment. Then we're going to tackle some, well, fake scores for Threadripper which isn't really so much information as it is more a PSA, as well as the first piece of news which we're going to fight against, and that is NVIDIA, and the Titan Volta news, which is currently circulating and making some waves. Now, this one's quite interesting. We're going to tackle it first, despite the fact that alphabetically it's last, because you know NVIDIA are, well, after AMD in the alphabet, and generally like to do things like ABC, in other words, alphabetically, but still... This is the fastest of the two pieces of news to go through. So, an image popped up on the internet from Facebook. That's how it seems to have started, anyway. And it's a very simple image. It shows, well, a Titan graphics card. Now, if you don't know the GPU too well, if you don't know NVIDIA's GPU too well, you might be forgiven for just thinking, okay, it's, you know, some random Titan card, who cares, right? No, not so much. There are a couple of oddities with this GPU, and we'll go through them right now. The first is that it has NVLink connectors very similar to a, P a Tesla P100, but the power connectors are located in a very different side. Secondly, the shroud, the actual you know cooler itself, looks very similar to one of the Tesla GPUs as well. Now, here's where it starts to get a bit weird. We do know, of course, NVIDIA are going to be releasing the Volta architecture over the next, you know, X amount of months. We're going to see it pop up in uh, the Tesla lineup and obviously the high-end lineup for, you know, professional use. And then eventually it's going to start trickling its way down to the, the GeForce 20 series, whatever they're going to end up being called. But here's where it gets a bit weird because the image popped up on Facebook and then overclock forums. But the funny thing is, the person responsible for the photograph is allegedly an intern at NVIDIA. Now, as a disclosure, I have been able to find the employee's badge, but I'm not going to post that in the video, because that seems really uncool, so I'm not going to do that. But you can find it if you want to, but I'm just not going to, uh, you know, kind of blast the guy in, you know, any, any more than what he has already done. But, um, basically, this image, which has popped up, is already raising some questions because the first question is it well you know titan xp and if it was is it a pascal um titan that either didn't see the light of day because it was like an early design prototype for the cooler whatever or is it a pascal titan which simply has not been released yet so perhaps it's going to be like you know slightly higher clocks you know, remember how you know the gtx 1080s for example came with slightly higher ram clocks is it going to be maybe that type of situation or, and this is what, of course, most people are suspecting it is, to be the Titan Volta, or at least some derivative thereof, which could possibly mean it's either going to be GV100 based or GV102 based. Um, unfortunately, there's just not enough information. There's a couple of images, as I said, but that's not enough information, even slightly, to ascertain the specifications of the card. I could certainly go through what, you know, the rumours of Volta are, you know, where it's got HBM2 and... You know, the number of CUDA cores, which is like 5,120 for the high-end cards, you know, for the professional use. But that doesn't really pertain at at all to these rumours. Because for all we know, the Titan cards, you know, could be based on GV102 and therefore greatly cut down. What level of cut down? Unfortunately, we just don't know. I mean, we could certainly use Pascal and kind of do some rough calculations on how many cuts they would make, what number of CUDA cores would be remaining. But ultimately, it would just be me guessing. So I don't really feel that in this particular video I want to kind of go into that but anyway it's kind of cool nevertheless what is more interesting uh and i i don't mean that because you know um the titan room isn't interesting but this is actually confirmation more than anything which i find rather well cool and that is amd's lisa sue has confirmed that the company will be taping out seven nm products later this year and this was during the 45th annual jp morgan global technology media and telecom conference Bloody hell, that is a long-ass sentence to say. Anyway, to set the scene a little bit, it wasn't too long ago we had the Financial Analyst Day, 
for those who didn't watch the conference, it was pretty simplistic in its goal. It was to convince investors and those, of course, with money that, hey, AMD are a good bet for the future. In other words, give us money. We are also good for your company. So, for example, if you're the Dell farms of the world, if you're, you know, the, the Google farms of the world, and by farms, of course, I mean server farms or cloud farms, whatever you were talking about, then they have a product and a roadmap which will certainly serve their needs. During that, there was a couple of distinct images which popped up, a graphics architecture roadmap and also the same for a CPU roadmap. Currently, for those who don't know, we're on Zen. So there is the product being produced on 14NM, and it looks like we're also going to see a 14NM POS architecture. On the GPU side of things, it's Vega, exactly the same situation, and that is, of course, for this year. But there were some questions because Zen 2 is being reported to be on 7NM by AMD, and, of course, Navi is much the same on 7NM as well. So there were some early reports and questions regarding this because, quite simply, AMD themselves had... Well, a roadmap leaked. Now, this is very important to realise it was leaked onto the internet. It was not something that AMD had hoped had been released on the internet, but nevertheless, uh, videocards.com grabbed it, and since then it was quite uh, it was quite well respected as like you know their product roadmap. And basically, it was pretty obvious from this uh, image. Anyway, this image showed that Vega 20 would be a thing, and it would be built on 7NM with a GFX9 architecture. So it would appear from all of the information we're seeing now, that Vega 20 is no longer a thing. It's going to jump straight to Navi. So, essentially what we're looking at here is the idea that... <clears throat> I Perhaps, and this is just me speculating, because obviously I don't know for sure, but perhaps it's because Vega has been delayed so much that they feel more confident to just say, hey, we're going to jump from one product straight to another product which could certainly be one way forward. And AMD have said that they want to be very aggressive with 7NM technology. They're going to do tape-outs later this year. And as we get closer to production, we're going to give more insights there. But the idea is to be more competitive throughout their entire portfolio. And finally, they have rethought their entire research and development philosophy to be more predictable and have multiple generations of improvement. So if you decide to take all of that into some context, it is entirely possible that this is one of the reasons we've not heard more rumours about Vega 20 at the moment, simply because they have decided internally, hey, this is not the way to go, it's better instead to just jump to an entire new architecture, keep us more competitive, and perhaps another reason they've decided to do that as well is due to timings. Like, if you think about it, and I did say this in another video, so I'll quickly repeat it in this one, let's say for the sake of argument that Vega 20 turns out, which... By the way, Vega 20, almost exactly the same specifications as Vega 10. Same number of compute units, same number of shaders, just presumably with higher clock speeds. Let's assume that they managed to get 20%, 30% higher clock speeds. So let's, for the sake of being very optimistic, say they managed to get 2000 megahertz, which is about 400 megahertz increase. That's very optimistic, but let's say they managed that. That's not that great. I mean, yes, it's that. Yes, it is impressive, and if they are fairly close behind, let's say Volta, then that could certainly be fairly, you know, fairly uh, put them in a decent position. It could perhaps leapfrog them slightly in performance, but it's not going to be enough to be super, you know, just decimate Volta or anything like that. This is assuming, of course, Vega is within, you know, close proximity to Volta. If it's not then releasing Vega 20 doesn't make any sense at all because it's still going to be drastically behind Volta. And if they are basically on the cusp of Volta, let's say they're 15% slower, then it would probably make more sense for AMD just to be really, really, really brutal with price cuts, cut their graphics card pricing as much as possible because presumably they would have been out on the market longer, their uh, yields would be fairly decent at that point. The only the only negative for AMD in that respect is HBM2 memory. But the fact of the matter is HBM2 would also be in use with Volta. I'm sorry, with uh, Vega 20 anyway. So it's possible they've just decided, eh, it's better for us just to go straight to Navi. And who knows what changes they're going to make. Presumably there's going to be the traditional increases in... Uh, you know, clock speed on 7nm as well. Obviously, it's going to require less power. Presumably, that means we're going to have higher clock speed, lower power consumption, 
possibly additional room on die for additional shaders, uh, whatever else they manage to squeeze on. Finally, I want to discuss a fake score, which actually popped up thanks to the popularity of Threadripper. For those who don't know what Threadripper is, it is, of course, the X390 platform. It is the new CPU from AMD. No, not the... Not the X370, not the AM4 ones, but instead a new one. It's going to have up to 16 cores, 32 threads, and it's reported to be absolutely monstrous. But, of course, there are a lot of scores that are starting to pop up, and some of them, unfortunately, are fake, along with some of the rumours. I actually didn't see this one myself originally, but it did gain a lot of popularity on Reddit and some other websites as well. So, I actually spotted this on videocards.com, as a couple of people actually had messaged me regarding the Reddit links, and to be honest, I've just been really behind on emails and everything else over the past few days just because of multiple reasons. So I figured rather than tackle it like, you know, what the score was, I figure I'll actually just let people know that it is a fake. Uh, thanks to videocards.com, they actually spotted this. I have to admit, when I did see the score, I was a bit sus suspect on the result. It scored 3,083. Now, basically, this is utilizing Cinebench, and it would appear that, well, it's not just fake, it is completely and utterly fake. While the name itself does check out, and by name I refer, of course, to the code name, which is the CPU identification string, which points out the engineering version, the clock speed, and other bits and pieces of the processor, there are certainly some oddities with it, and basically it was manually generated, excuse me, in uh, Cinebench, therefore it is completely and utterly null and void. As for what score uh, Fred Ripper is going to finally get, I wouldn't be surprised if it is slightly over the 3000 mark. There is one thing to bear in mind, these clock speeds for the um, Fred Ripper CPU are slightly lower than let's say the 1800X or the 1700X and therefore that will be something to take into account when we start looking at the Cinebench scores but and obviously we don't know the effect of this 100% but we can make some presumptions that the fact it will have quad channel memory support might actually be quite the bonus in terms of performance no I'm not saying that this is going to propel the CPU to be you know equal at exactly the same clock speeds as, let's say, um, a 1800X in a single thread workload. Just to clarify my, what I mean by that, if you have, let's say, the 16 core 32 thread, uh, thread ripper, and let's say that's running at 3.6 gigahertz, but let's say you're running a Ryzen 7 1800X um, at 4 gigahertz, I'm not saying that a single thread performance, the two might equal each other out because, you know, thread ripper has quad ch channel memory, but I wouldn't be surprised in some situations if it did help, but ultimately we just don't know that yet. And unfortunately, until the product does release onto the internet, we're just not going to be 100% certain. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.